In February of 1993, the NAACP unanimously passed a resolution supporting equal and civil rights for all citizens, regardless of sexual orientation. You dare compare yourself with blacks! Do you understand that the freedom train to Selma and the blood that was shed going for that freedom train did not end in sodomy? Yeah, over here, please. Right. Right. I've heard that line before. I really think sometimes that gays are the new communists. Um, that now that you know the Cold War is over and the walls are coming down, the right-wing fundamentalists have to have some group to fear and to hate. We're the evil ones now. We're the ones trying to destroy the fabric of America. Homosexual rights, discrimination against religious schools, women in combat units, that's change, all right. But that's not the kind of change America needs. It's not the kind of change America wants and it's not the kind of change we can abide in a nation we still call God's country. Recently there's been this movement. On top of being a born-again Christian, you also have to subscribe to this list of, of this political agenda. Yeah. You have to be anti-abortion, you have to be anti-gay, you have to be pro-military spending, you pro have to be against the National Endowment for the Arts, they all, almost describe it as the new civil war. I've heard it described on Christian radio. I listen to it all the time. But this is the new civil war, but except this civil war is going to be a civil war of godly values versus ungodly values. When family values are undermined, our country suffers. Americans try to raise their children to understand right and wrong, only to be told that every so-called lifestyle alternative is morally equivalent. That is wrong. They're very evasive when you start very asking evasive. them about traditional family values. I think it, I think it just has, it, you know, family values just has this nice ring to it. And, mm -hmm. and uh, just by saying that they're pro-family implies that we're not. We certainly contributed our fair share to families. the families, uh, you know, with Mike having a child and me having three. You know, that, that's been the other thing that, that's always kind of got us, you know, from the Sheldon, you know, Sheldonites and stuff saying, well, we're here to tear down the family. Well, geez, we, we spend time trying to build the family, you know, at least twice a week whenever the kids are over. And uh, we probably spend more time with our children in a family setting and doing family type things with them to make sure that we're nourishing and, and raising good, you know, Kids, healthy good healthy kids, you know, a couple of times a week plus weekends. We started joking about getting married. In fact, a friend suggested to us, hey, you guys ought to get married. And we, he meant it as a joke and we meant it as a joke at first. And then the longer we thought about it, we thought, well, why not? You know, why not actually get married? Why not actually commit ourselves to each other in some sort of formal ceremony? So we held a, a ceremony and we had, each of us had our own best man and we had to go to a bakery and get two grooms on the cake. The lady thought it was a little strange, but um, and we exchanged rings and had vows, and we really consider ourselves married. The society doesn't recognize it. It's not legally recognized, but I'm more married now than I was when I was married. I just would like to know why you find it necessary to engage in sexual intercourse with a, another male. You can have a male friendship, but why do you find that sexual that extra step, why do you engage in that? Why did you go the extra step, guys? We could turn that around and ask the question from the hetero heterosexual perspective. Why do heterosexual people who are attracted and in love with each other feel the necessity to express that love to each other sexually? Okay. It's, that's the answer to that question. There have been even some evangelicals who have suggested that, that uh, well, if gay people uh, can't become heterosexual, then let them at least maybe live together you know, in a happy home, but just don't genitalize. You know, well, that gets not only, uh, that's not only reflective of a ridiculous idea about sexuality, but um, it points up that, uh, that what they really are upset about is not homosexual orientation as such, but uh, certain specific genital acts.